Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Friday night edition studentloanjustice.org live stream. My name is Alan Collins. If you're a student loan borrower anywhere in the country, whether you're in default, not in default, good stead, bad stead, we're glad that you found us. And again, welcome. That might be a slightly too long opening, but anyways, I love the jingle. I'm stealing your uh, idea, Ed. Uh, hope everything is going well out there in the country. Um, everything is quite chilly here in northern Wisconsin. Um, I'm going to get right into it. If you have any questions or comments, throw them out as we go forward. If I can see them, I will respond to them. So it's been a pretty big week for us. Um, the petition now stands at 984,000 signatures. Uh, it's slowed down a little bit this week. I don't know why. Um, we are so close to a million signatures. We picked up like 100,000 signatures like two weeks ago. Um, and for those of you who have been with our group for any length of time, uh, certainly over the past year, uh, you know how important this petition is for us. Change.org slash cancel student loans. For the first 15 years of our existence, we were fighting very moderately for the return of bankruptcy protections to student loans. The founding fathers called for uniform bankruptcy laws in the Constitution ahead of the power to declare war, ahead of the power to raise an army, ahead of the power to build a navy and print money. So that's how important the Founding Fathers felt that bankruptcy protections were. This is uniquely what has been taken away from student loans. And really, the core of this problem lies in the removal of bankruptcy protections. But folks, I'm here to tell you that certainly as of, let's say, a year ago today when the pandemic hit, by all rational metrics and measures now, it is a failed lending system with a capital F. Even before the pandemic, 80% of all certainly federal student loan borrowers were never going to be able to repay their loans. Uh, now this pandemic happened and it's, what is it? 80, is it 90% now? Probably. Is it 95% now? Yeah, it could very well be. Suffice it to say, um, the default rate for everybody walking around with student loans today, well, even a year ago was probably going to be 75%. Today it's going to be 80, 85, maybe even 90%. So this lending system has failed with a capital F. And while bankruptcy protections are still extremely important, the fact of the matter is that the president has the power to cancel these loans, certainly all federal loans, 87% of all student loan debt, uh, by executive order. So that means that he can tell the secretary to cancel the loans and the secretary of education would have to do that. The entire federally owned loan portfolio, which, as I said, 87% of all student loan debt. So this needs to happen. Um, you know, obviously, uh, bankruptcy protections need to be returned to all student loans, federal and private. Uh, and that is something that we need Congress for. But we do not need Congress to cancel uh, the vast majority of student loan debt. So we started our petition a year ago, change.org slash cancel student loans. And I'm very happy to report to you today, not only are we super close, so, so close to a million signatures, canceling student loans by executive order is now at the top of the news. Um, so we started our petition in March. Uh, we had begun talking about it as far back as August of 2019. Uh, but, you know, for the first six months or so that after we started the petition in March, we were a voice in the wilderness. Nobody was talking about you know, canceling student loans by executive order. Well, today, as I said, it's at the top of the news in, uh, what was it, November, September, October, I think November or maybe September. I can't remember. Um, uh, Elizabeth Warren and Chuck Schumer uh appropriated, I'll say, uh, our call for uh, for the president to cancel loans by executive order. And um, so you all should be thrilled. We are just tickled pink that um, leading members of Congress have appropriated uh, our call for loan cancellation by executive order. 
But folks, the topic of the, the what I want to talk to you about tonight, the most important thing, um, it's not how great we're doing, really, and we are doing just way better than we were a year ago or even six months ago um, today. Thanks to your efforts, my and your and everybody's efforts. But folks, um, you know, close only counts in hand grenades and horseshoes, as they say. There are a lot of dangers out there. A lot, you know, we have very well-funded opposition out there. And there's two things they absolutely cannot stand the thought of. Number one, truly, is bankruptcy. The bad guys, the student loan mafia, the Department of Education, the guarantors, the collection companies, the servicers, uh, many other people, well-funded, well-resourced people who are profiting from this indefensible lending system off of our backs. They do not, 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 and have never, never, ever wanted bankruptcy protections returned to these loans. In fact, a uh, discarded strategy memo from Sally May that was found on the floor of a congressional briefing room many years ago. In fact, around the time that we started our organization back in 2006, uh, it was actually like 2007 or 8 when this was found, discarded uh, strategy memo listed the priorities of Sally May, the company, um, and this was an internal strategy memo, and I think a reporter found it on the floor. Their number one legislative priority, that way back in 2006, uh, late 2006, I think it was, was keeping bankruptcy gone from student loans. Like the number one priority was like, hey, we need to make more loans. Obviously, that would be but the, but, the, but the number one legislative priority for Sally May, who at the time was the largest lending company uh, in the country, was keeping bankruptcy gone from the loans. Similarly, the Department of Education, they fight tooth and nail behind the scenes, uh, writing, mem writing uh, you know, expert uh, witness briefs uh, in bankruptcy cases. They fight tooth and nail to keep bankruptcy gone from student loans. Department of Education is not, not, not a good actor in this. Uh, so I know, obviously, at this point, it's a catastrophically failed lending system. Our petition is doing great towards getting the President Council loans. But dudes, our opposition, we really hit a nerve, let me just say. And so I want to tell you my biggest fear. And there's a little bit of a history here, so bear with me um, a couple seconds. When we first started this organization, um, way, 2006, way back in 2007 and 8, we traveled the country. Um, we were profile, we were featured top story on 60 Minutes. They broke a bunch of our research on that program. It was a big deal, um, suffice it to say. So we traveled the country and we were pushing, uh, we visited the, the home districts of nearly every legislator in Congress on both House and Senate education committees. Um, and, dur and during that time, we realized pretty quickly that obviously bankruptcy protections had to be returned to student loans. And uh, to our credit, Hillary Clinton introduced a great bill, the Senate, the S-511, the Senate Student Loan Borrower Bill of Rights, which would have paved the way to return bankruptcy to student loans. Um, but here's what happened. Um, I remember I was in Nyack, New York at a motel on this trip. It was about halfway through the trip. And I got a call from, and we were, we were fairly famous at this point just because of the 60 Minutes thing and other stuff. Um, but I got a call from one of the leading student loan advocate groups in the country, a woman by the name of... Uh, Christina Lindstrom, L-I-N-D-S-T-R-O-M, who at the time was uh, head of the U.S. PERCS, Public Interest Research Group. Great group, by the way, uh, founded by Ralph Nader, um, great public benefit purpose, etc. But to my astonishment, here was this Christina Lindstrom person um, making it very clear, in fact, I think even point blank telling me, that we needed to stop fighting for the return of bankruptcy protections. And she was calling on behalf of other people, like, for example, Deanne Lunin, uh, who at that time was at the National Consumer Law Center. Now she's at Harvard University. Um, probably also on the 
she was also Christine Lindstrom was probably also doing the bidding of people from like Lauren Asher from Tikas, I believe, and uh, maybe even uh, people from the College Board. It's it's a clique. It's a Washington D.C. clique of all these, by and large, Ivy League educated people who call themselves student advocates. Anyways. Um, they made it abundantly clear that they wanted us to stop fighting for the return of bankruptcy protections to student loans because they were going to um, instead push for these awesome, great, problem-solving uh, loan forgiveness or even call it cancellation programs. They said, no, 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 Alan, quit fighting for bankruptcy. We got this thing covered. We're going to do this thing, IBR, Income Based Repayment, where people pay for 25 years, they get their loans forgiven. We're going to do this great thing called Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program, where you work for a nonprofit for 10 years, you get your loans forgiven. So forget about bankruptcy. Don't do it. Don't even go there. Or, you know, you can do what you want, but we're just telling you it ain't going to happen because we, the, the established student loan advocates, are going to push through these two forgiveness programs or cancellation programs or whatever you want to call it. So that was like 13 years ago, folks. Now, we didn't listen to them. We were like, well, okay, you do what you do, but we've got to have bankruptcy return to these loans. What you just said sounds untrustworthy. It sounds like there's a lot of opportunities for um, these forgiveness programs to be administered in a bad way, et cetera, et cetera. Well, here we are, folks. Um, how many years later? I, I lost count. 14 years later. We have these IBR programs now. We have public service loan forgiveness. And how are those working out? Exactly as we feared, 99% of the people in public service loan forgiveness are being kicked out of the programs. And they're being left owing far, far more than had they never even tried in the first place. Um, with the income-based repayment program, we're probably going to see about the same results. You know, as of five or even six years ago now, maybe, gosh, Maybe even seven years ago, no, about six years ago, um, we discovered that 57% um, of the people in IBR had, had already been kicked out. In fact, in just one year alone, 57% had been kicked out because they failed to verify their income. This is just one of the many, 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 many bureaucratic hurdles that people have to go through to stay in good standing in these programs. So, dudes, I'm telling you, um, that put on 10, 15 years onto our sentence, onto our debt sentence. These forgiveness programs, these loan cancellation programs, they are all fake. They were never, if they were ever designed with good intentions, I don't know. But the fact of the matter is the Department of Education will do everything possible to not cancel loans. That's what they've always done. That's what they will always do. So out, my biggest fear is that that's going to happen again. You know, the gloves have come off on this side. We're not putting up with any nonsense from anybody, no matter what their title might be. They might claim to be student advocates. We don't care. We don't trust politicians, people in Washington, D.C., or anyone claiming to be a student loan advocate. It's further than we can bull them. So my biggest fear is that, yeah, we started this conversation about loan cancellation by executive order, but here's the way it's looking to me right now tonight. Oh yeah, we'll get loan cancellation, but it will be loan cancellation much like the nonsense that we saw ushered in in 2007 with public service loan forgiveness with IBR. It'll be up to $10,000 or it'll be up to $50,000 with all kinds of strings attached. And by the way, there's a very important distinction. The president can cancel these loans tomorrow 100% by executive order. No fuss, no muss, no bullshit. He can just turn to the secretary and say, cancel these loans, all of them, right now. And the Department of Education would have to do it. But the other way to cancel student loans is get Congress to pass a law that raises, I don't know, 100, 200 billion, 500 billion, a trillion, maybe even $2 trillion dollars which is necessary for any loan cancellation program that Congress might pass because of these pay-go rules. So if you want to cancel a dollar in student loans through Congress, you've got to raise a dollar and you've got to give that dollar to the Department of Education so that they can cancel, cancel the loans. Um, it's complete bullshit, folks. Pardon my French. Very important distinction here. Congress 
can never and will never actually cancel student loans. I'm going to repeat that. Congress can never, will never actually cancel student loans. Number one, they'll never get enough votes in the House or Senate to pass, to raise a tax or cut other programs or somehow uh, or another cobble together $500 billion, a trillion, $2 trillion for the purpose of canceling student loans. Just ain't going to happen. Um, so that's number one. But number two, even if they did, whatever legislation came out the other end of Congress, it would be giving money to the Department of Education and saying, okay, cancel loans. And there would be all kinds of strings attached. And the Department of Education would use every power available to it, uh, legally or maybe even illegally. They could, make, they could make it up on the fly. Department of Education would do everything possible to not cancel the loans. They would use every trick in the book to not cancel loans. That's what they're doing today with the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program, with IBR. Uh, if you're in IBR right now and you think you're going to go 20 or 25 years and that eventually your loans are going to be canceled, no, they're not. Guys, I'm telling you, you will be, if the, the odds are overwhelming, like 99%, that you will be disqualified out of uh, IBR before receiving one dime of loan forgiveness. And you will be kicked to the curb owing far, far, far more than had you never even tried in the first place. So dudes, my biggest fear, again, and I hope that you understand that we've been doing this for 16 years, folks, and we have we can tell all the tricks uh, before they even happen. We can smell these tricks from miles away at this point, and I'm telling you that what we're hearing right now, this loan cancellation of up to $10,000, up to $50,000, it is a trick, and our opposition would love nothing more than to pass some nonsense, ridiculous, lame, partial loan, student loan cancellation program, whether by Congress or whether by executive order. They would love to do that as a cheap substitute for returning standard bankruptcy protections to student loans. So, and that's another reason why I mentioned the media at the top of this. We're seeing the media plant the seeds for this already. Um, you know, we're big fans now currently of Elizabeth Warren and Chuck Schumer. You know, the fact that they even mentioned canceling student loans by executive order is a good thing. Um, but at the same time, folks, we are not fools and we will not be fooled again the way the student loan advocates fooled us 14 years ago or however long, however long ago that was. We're not, we're not going to be fooled again. We are not. We will not be fooled again. We will not be played for fools by those names that I mentioned before or whoever the more current cast of characters are, whether they be in uh, Boston or Washington, D.C. or wherever they may be, whoever they may be claiming to be fighting for, we will not be fooled. Um, but, you know, in the media, we're seeing all kinds of interesting position pieces come out from heretofore good guys like, uh, you know, a liberal media like MSNBC. An op-ed was published uh, last week saying, Joe Biden doesn't think that he can cancel student loans by executive order. And that's a good thing. Or no, Joe Biden thinks that Congress needs to be canceling student loans, not him. And that's a good thing, they said. Well, dudes, I'm telling you, this, it's not a good thing. And that whole thing is a key tell, is a key piece of evidence that MSNBC is in league with the student loan swamp, in league with our opposition. We saw a very similar piece from the Brookings Institute. Uh, what was the guy's name? Something Mooney, M-O-O-N-E-Y, or yeah, I believe that's right. Uh, Thomas Mooney, maybe? Um, saying the same thing, saying, oh, Joe Biden should listen to uh, Congress uh, about canceling student loans. He shouldn't be listening to people like, um, I can't remember what, but the point was the same. We should do loan, ca we should do loan cancellation by Congress, not by executive order. 
So I don't know if I'm being clear or not, folks, but what I'm telling you is very simple. The student loan swamp wants to do a fake, lame loan cancellation as a cheap substitute for returning bankruptcy protections. So if they can get a $10,000 loan cancellation, which they can find a way to make up in, in over the next couple of years, uh, $10,000 loan cancellation instead of returning bankruptcy to student loans? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, please, may, sir, may I have another? That is exactly what they want. So folks, um, we continue to fight for loan cancellation by executive order. No doubt about it. We are pushing for 100% loan cancellation. And quite frankly, we will not stop until we get that. But equally, in fact, in my view, m even more important, in fact, a critical and necessary precondition for actually getting 100% loan cancellation is the return of bankruptcy protections to all student loans. So guys, this really keeps me up at night. I mean, I'm thrilled that we've gotten so far as we have today. It is a catastrophically failed lending system. Nobody is paying on their student loans right now, and I have great confidence that almost nobody will ever resume paying on their loans. But dudes, we need a clean outcome. We need, we need a clean death to this lending system. The president needs to cancel all federally owned student loans, and bankruptcy protections have got to be returned to the loans that remain. In other words, the loans that cannot be canceled by the president. So, and you know, again, we're seeing more media manipulation out there. Um, I'm fine. I just, as so you know, I am finding it extraordinarily difficult to get anything published these days, whether it's about the petition, whether it's about just bigger numbers, like the fact that nearly, uh, well, 19 of the states of the union owe more in student loan debt than their entire state budgets. Like, I don't even think we mentioned bankruptcy hardly at all in that article. Well, maybe we do one time. But um, the corporate media has put the kibosh on us um, and, and truly on um, our push for bankruptcy, certainly our push for uh, canceling loans by executive order also. Because really, guys, we really did hit a nerve with our petition. And... Good on Chuck Schumer and Elizabeth Warren um, for, uh, you know, championing our call to do that because that really did touch a nerve in Washington, D.C. Department of Education is very happy to take a trillion dollars and pretend to cancel loans like they're doing right now with public service, with IBR. But the thought of actually losing that portfolio by executive order, it it horrifies them to the core. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we're seeing stuff in the press. No, no, don't cancel loans by executive order. Cancel loans through Congress. But we're also seeing a very concerted push in the media to kill the push for bankruptcy. They're going, we're seeing, and we see this once or twice a year. They'll say, oh, this guy just got his student loans discharged in bankruptcy. Like the most recent one is some guy from Puerto Rico gets $400,000 in student loans uh, wiped out in bankruptcy. So the corporate, the swamp media, like Yahoo Finance, like Forbes, <coughs> um, like other uh, mainstream corporate Wall Street slash swamp media, they are, and, and they've been doing this for years, they've been um, trying very hard to make people believe that, oh, no, you can get your loans discharged under through under under existing bankruptcy law the the prospect of bankruptcy horrifies these people they do not 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 want bankruptcy returned to student loans um so yeah we see these pieces of where they trot up one of the people who very few and far between was able to get a discharge on their loans that's like maybe one in fifteen thousand are the percentages of people who get discharges in bankruptcy versus people who don't. One in 15,000. So you can say that bankruptcy is possible for student loans, but it's pretty much like saying, yeah, winning the you can win the lottery. You can. It's true. People do all the time. Look at this guy. Look at this person. Look at all these people that won the lottery. Yeah, you can say that. Um, but as a practical matter, it's just bullshit. So... 
dudes, this is my fear. It's my greatest fear. I see it happening. We cannot let that happen. We've got to grow our petition and we've got to get, we've got to educate the people out there. Don't fall for any more tricks. Do not fall for any more tricks being put out by the student loan swamp. We've seen them again and again and again. We will not be fooled again. And if you know what's good for you, you will listen to us instead of saying, no, 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 I, I want to believe. I want to believe this bullshit that's being pushed, in my, pushed into my mind by the corporate media. It sounds good. I don't want to rock the boat. Um, I'm just going to go, go along, get along, and trust that, yeah, I won't be disqualified from IBR, and I will get my loans forgiven, or Joe Biden is going to cancel loans, and I'm just going to... Yeah, I'm just going to sit back, wait, watch, worry, and do nothing. Please, don't do that. It's extremely dangerous for us. You know, we are the pioneers in this fight, folks. We've got a million people on our petition now. We should have 25 or 30, as many as probably 40 million people we should have on this petition. Even before the pandemic, 80% of all borrowers were never going to be able to repay their loans, folks. 80%. Now, if you just count federal loan borrowers alone, that's 38 million people were losing sleep over their student loans before the pandemic. Um, so, guys, I don't know what more I can tell you, but growing this petition is absolutely critical. Worse may come to worst, folks. We may get screwed in the way that I said. My biggest fear, getting a fake loan cancellation, a bunch of nonsense thrown at us. And bankruptcy remains gone so that this predatory lending beast can roll through yet another generation of borrowers of Americans. We can't afford that, dude. This, this country is too important. We can't allow this country to be conquered and enslaved by debt. This lending system has got to go away. It's got to be taken to the bath and drown in the tub. So getting everybody you know to sign on our petition is incredibly important. Right now, seeding the media with that article that we just wrote. You can see it up here, over here, down there, somewhere connected to this. You will see an article that we published at Medium proving using very recent federal data, education department data, that the vast, well, that 18 states owe more than their state budgets in student loan debt. We've got to get that story out there. This is something that the governors from all 18 of these states, the, they need to be hit between the eyes with. We need to convince conservatives out there who, by and large, tend to be against us. You know, the knee-jerk Fox News conservatives out there, they go, cancel student loans? No, I don't want Antifa and, um, you know, these anarchists and these protesters. No, 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 don't cancel their loans. That's not fair. We've got to get the conservatives on our side. This is a conservative issue. You know those 18 states that I just mentioned? Most of them are red states. So we've got to blow through all that bullshit that's being seeded in the media. We've got to. And it starts with us. And it starts with our group. It starts with you. It starts with me. I'm doing everything I can. You've got to do everything you can to grow that petition and to get that story out there. So, And read the article. You can see it, like I said, somewhere around here. If you live in one of those states, uh, I'm not going to rattle them all off, but particularly if you live in Georgia, Florida, um, Missouri, North Carolina, and a couple others, Indiana I think is pretty bad, you need to make it your effort to make sure that all the local media in your state know and report on this research finding that we just made. You need to get this article to them. You need to tell them, and maybe with your state chapter group, we have state chapter groups for every state in the union, with your state chapter group, put some very serious and public pressure on the governor, on your state legislator, um, whoever you can to spread the word in your state. Um, the lending system has got to go, guys. We've got to kill it. We are David. It is Goliath. But we're not stupid. We've got some smart, clever people on our side. We've got the Constitution on our side. We should have 40 million people on our side. When you find them, we will. So I'm not going to go on any further. I've already gone, whoa, I've gone way longer than I thought I was going to. Um, but come on, guys, you've got to help. You've got to help. This starts with you. It starts with you. This lending system will end with us. 
So let's fight this together and win and not be conquered and enslaved by this debt. We're a better people than that. The founders are on our side. The Constitution on our, is on our side. We are on our side. We can't lose in many ways. But we've got to fight. So with that, I will just wish you all a good night, great weekend. Uh, the last thing I'll say is please donate. We can only do this with very nominal funding from normal people in the form of personal gifts, donations from people like you. We barely made our monthly expenses last March 1st, a few days ago. Uh, I don't want to be in that predicament again. If you appreciate all that we have accomplished, all that we are poised to accomplish, please throw a couple bucks our way. Um, we don't need much to fight and win this battle, but we simply cannot do it on nothing. Uh, you can go to the website, studentloanjustice.org. And with that, I will simply bid you all a good night. Uh, Godspeed. God bless everybody.